start out, why don't you all go ahead and introduce yourselves for the people that are listening? Um, hi, I'm Dreamcast Guy. I review basically everything. Uh, uh, that's kind of what I'm most known for is I kind of review all the big games for every console, including hopefully the Switch upcoming. And uh, I do a lot of top 10 lists. So I'm very excited to be here. And next up is who I think we all know as Stealth from Twitter if you're a Nintendo fan. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Stealth? Uh, you did a pretty good job, but um, I'm Stealth. Uh, people know me from Twitter. Big Nintendo fan, big JRPG fan, um, frequent podcast guest. You've probably seen me around. I'm John over at Spawn Wave Media. You guys have probably seen me for a lot of the tech stuff I do on the channel and a lot of Switch and other stuff as well with Sony and Microsoft. But yep, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for thanks for inviting me on, Jesse. All right. Glad to have you. And now that we got the introductions out of the way, to get started on this Nintendo Switch discussion, what were your overall thoughts leading up to the Nintendo Switch event, and how have they changed since you've watched it, and are you more or less excited for the Switch, and why? We can begin with uh, you, Spawn Wave. Okay, sure. So, leading up to the event, I think for a while most of us kind of lost sight of, of the Switch as a game console and just really started looking at it as kind of a, a technical... I guess I don't want to say Marvel, but everyone was really interested in the, in the specs about it more so than the games. And so leading up to the event, especially with a lot of my channel where we're trying to figure it out, I kind of lost sight of the games that, that were going to show up there. And when the event actually happened and you see just game after game being announced, specifically for me, Xenoblade 2, um, that really made me get extremely excited for the system, like more so than I was leading up to it. We knew Breath of the Wild was going to be there. Uh, we were hoping some kind of Mario game and we, just based on all the rumors, we kind of got overhyped, but then Xenoblade 2 was nowhere on my radar at all, and I see that. Now I'm now I'm very excited for the system. Even even if the specs weren't what I was thinking they would be, I'm still really excited for the system because it's going to be used for me mostly as a portable device around the house. So I'm, I'm very excited for the Switch right now. On to you, Stealth. Uh, what were your thoughts on this? And initially, I'm a big 3DS person, so I saw it as like the savior to handheld gaming, so to speak, as just another way to enjoy JRPGs on the go. Um, you know, full full disclosure, I, I knew a, a lot about the system beforehand, just hearing various things. So nothing really surprised me um, before. And and I you know I knew the graphics wouldn't be up to you know Scorpio level or anything like that. Um, what, what I was pleased to learn about w was the, um, HD rumble. That, that actually seems pretty cool. Yeah, it actually it does. It, it's pretty, it's, it's actually really technologically advanced. If you look up, there's some actually really cool yeah. videos on YouTube showing it. It is, it is actually amazing. Yeah, I had a pretty good beat on, on the games, but that was a surprising thing to me that I didn't hear beforehand. Yeah, I think when people hear that HD rumble, they probably just think of it as like a yeah. marketing term or something, and they don't give much thought to it. But if you look at the size of these Joy-Cons and the technology that's packed inside of it, it actually is something, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say revolutionary, but it is the next step in having hectic feedback and uh, yeah. advanced rumble capabilities well, and controllers and stuff. Well, if you look at, like, uh, the MacBook Pro uses something similar to that for its, like, touchpad, where it's, like, mm -hmm. using haptic feedback whenever you press it. It doesn't actually press, but it feels like it's pressing. And that's the same kind of technology that Nintendo's using in their in their Joy-Cons now. And what about you, Dreamcast guy? What were your thoughts leading up to this and after the big reveal? Uh, leading up to it, I was very, very excited. The initial teaser really made it look super straightforward, which I feel like a lot of Nintendo devices get so gimmicky that at times they just kind of lose sight of the game. So leading up to this, I was very excited. I was pretty let down by the conference at the beginning. All the stuff at the beginning. I, but you have to realize, I'm not a person who likes movement controls and stuff like that. I just like to sit down with the game and just play it and enjoy a good story and go on exploration and level up characters. So when I saw like him doing the haptic feedback or the, uh, the HD rumble is an interesting thing, but it, f it felt weird. So I was let down a little bit by the conference, but I am very excited for the third party prospects like uh, that. What is that? Project Octopath Traveler. I'm super excited for whatever the hell that thing's going to be. <laughs> that game so looks I'm, good, yeah. I know. I'm so, so I'm so mixed. I feel like 
it's all going to be about in the first six months, the first six months is going to be a battlefield in the market. And that's what I'm most excited for, because it's just going to be like it's either going to explode out of the gate and prove all the naysayers wrong or it's going to come out and kind of pitter on shelves. So I'm, I'm more excited about it to see what it really does now, but still kind of sp- uh, skeptical as to what it'll do. For me, leading up to the event, uh, obviously I was looking up as much information as possible, trying to keep up to date on all of the new rumors that were coming out. And uh, the thing was, everyone was complaining that this console, it's going to be this powerful, it might have this GPU architecture in it or whatever. But to me, my thought was always, Nintendo's designing this for primarily for their own games and then third parties can use it to port their games over if they need to and if you take that into consideration Mario can only get so detailed before it starts just looking weird like you don't need to see every tiny little stitch in Mario's outfit um, Zelda on the other hand could be a different story it could use the extra power uh, for draw distance and things like that So it wasn't really that big of a thing for me, and then seeing the improved version of Breath of the Wild for uh, the Switch, uh, it's upscaled in resolution, the draw distance is a little bit further away, and the overall color of the game looks better. So after the Switch event, we are able to tell that it is uh, noticeably more powerful than the Nintendo Wii U was but not by an extraordinary amount. And the fact that this is, to me, it's going to be primarily a handheld console is really great. Um, So yeah, that's basically my thoughts. I was excited going into it and I'm still excited. I've seen a lot of people were kind of disappointed at the lack of day one launch titles because all Mm -hmm. the rumors leading up to it were like, it's going to have uh, a Pokemon port announced. It's going to have Splatoon 2 or uh, the remix Splatoon. It's going to have Mario Kart 8 ported over. It's going to have the Mario Cross Rabbids game. It's going to have all of these different things, which half of the stuff was announced to come later on in the year, so you can still look forward to that. Right. But I can right. still see why people were disappointed with the initial launch lineup for the Switch. And it's still like a little over a month away. So mm-hmm. chances are they're going to have another direct before it launches to really clarify what exactly the eShop's going to be, their uh, their online system functionality, stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that direct to learn more about the system uh, right. operating system right. itself. But they don't they don't they really don't need a lot of games at launch to be honest. They need one big game which is Zelda and then a couple small ones cuz the Switch is going to sell out the first month no matter what. Yeah, that's Zelda's, basically what I've been saying. Zelda's yeah. there. They don't They don't need... What they really need to focus on right now is end of the year, and then they desperately need to make sure years two and three are still heavily supported. So by pushing these games down the line, even if they come out holiday, they'll still technically be kind of new releases in January and you know February for people who get their Switch on Christmas. So yeah. that will just help move units because I don't know if you saw that uh, the Switch came out today in Japan and it sold out in 15 minutes. So it's it's not going to have a problem moving off shelf. You're not going to see Switches on on the shelf the first month, probably even the second or third month. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if they if they push these these games out towards the holiday season, they'll give themselves a really strong strong presence come holiday season. So. It- it will, but I, I very much fear them spacing releases out too much. As soon as people unplug a game console to plug something else in, they usually don't go back to it. A lot of people love the Wii U, and the Wii U had a great attach rate, but as soon as the, the releases started to trickle down, people were not having it. So I, I'm really afraid that if there is not a big Nintendo release or something really interesting and palatable every two months, People are going to start to forget the Switch before we even hit the giant releases at holiday. That's my fear anyways. Yeah. That's, my, that's, a, that's a good point. That's a good point. My personal thought on this is uh, they have Breath of the Wild for the more hardcore fans. They have 1-2 Switch uh, to kind of recapture some of that casual audience they gained with the Nintendo Wii. And then they have these other games that are somewhere in between. They're, some may fall more on the casual side, some may fall more on the hardcore side. 
And then uh, within the first month or two after the Switch launches, you're going to be getting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is going to be no doubt a huge seller on uh, the Switch. And then there's Splatoon 2, which is, uh, to my surprise, an actual sequel. I thought it was just going to be some remixed version of the Switch, or of the uh, Splatoon for Wii U. Mm. So they have those games uh, that they've already announced. They could announce even more games leading up to the Switch launch, especially with the Virtual Console Library. And then mm -hmm. whenever E3 comes, which is just a few months after the Switch launch, I think that's when you're going to get more into depth on what exactly this new Mario game is. You're probably going to get, uh, I, I want to say that I'm hopeful for some kind of Metroid Prime. Metroid. Mention. Yes. Right? Uh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Metroid all day. I think it was... At last year's E3, when they announced Federation Force, there was an interview with Reggie where he said that he knows Metroid or Federation Force isn't the Metroid game that fans want. So hopefully that means they know what Metroid game fans want and they're working on it. And uh, just as uh, Smash Brothers originally started out as its own unique IP fighting game for the Nintendo 64, and then they kind of put the Nintendo characters in the game. Personally, I think Federation Force started out as that uh, multiplayer game where it's basically like soccer with uh, the blasters or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, yeah. And then they were like, well, we haven't had a good Metroid game in a while. Why don't we just reskin this and turn it into a Metroid game? That way we can kind of get something out there to please the fans. And because it has Metroid attached to it, it may sell more than something that's just a brand new IP altogether. So I think that's what that was. And with them saying that they know what Metroid game fans want, I really, really expect them to announce that during E3. Probably the biggest thing they could announce is Pokemon Stars. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I had a, I had an argument with someone the other day, like in like the real world here with me, where. They were telling me that Pokemon is not a uh, not a system seller. <laughs> it, I would say it is the system seller. <laughs> I feel like if, if, if they do that, it is going to be the ultimate proof of concept to say this is both Pokemon Stadium, the thing you play on your TV, but it is also the Pokemon you play on the go. I feel like Pokemon Stars, if that really does exist and all these rumors are true, they need to announce that before it actually comes out. That way the pre-orders skyrocket even more. Yeah. Well, did you see sales? Did you see sales for Pokemon Sun and Moon came out the other day? I didn't see the numbers, but I yes. heard they were freaking crazy. Okay, so that game came out November 18th, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. they had roughly a month and a half between then and the end of December. It sold four and a half million units. God wow. damn. In a, in, I, in a month and a half. I, I do have it on good authority that, that the game is real. And that they weren't going to announce it at the Switch event, but they were going to later. Okay. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's like a typical third game where they have more content. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if they market it right, like other third games, it could sell 5, 10 million. Yeah, but that's, yeah. that's a game, like you said, that's a game you don't need right now. They need yeah. Six months. And really, that's, that's more of a thing where the Pokemon company will announce a direct in, say, July... And then they'll say, oh, it's releasing holiday. Usually they, they, they like the October slot. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see. But that, um, I, I would put money on that coming out this year, if, if nothing else. Yeah, I'm it, I'm very excited for, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. But uh, 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 yeah, I'm very excited for Pokemon Stars whenever it comes out, if all of the rumors are true, because potentially you have the right analog stick on the Nintendo Switch to control the camera movement. You can get different angles and stuff like that if they incorporate it in. You have the same game that looks incredible on the 3DS, but now it's going to be in HD, so it's not going to have the jagged pixels and everything else. It's going to look crystal clear and amazing. Uh, there could potentially be the new Pokemon added to the game. And then if they do have some sort of Pokemon Stadium type uh, game added into it, that would make it amazing. 
I've already seen people data mine the the 3DS versions of Pokemon Sun and Moon and saw that there's already the super high resolution sprites are already in the game. So clearly they have already done like a, a large chunk of the final work on uh, hmm. stars. Like clearly it is set to go in some capacity, which so, gets me even more excited. So do you think that means that there would be some kind of compatibility between stars and sun and moon then if the images are already in sun and moon for like trading back and forth and everything? I think uh, they're working on cross battle. Yeah. Oh, cool. That could be good. I yeah. I heard I heard some slip from from the, uh, Reggie Fizeme, which may have just been a miss say. It was in the, the I think the pro Jared interview that, that was I did. a really good that was a really good interview. It was. Well, it was so funny. I mean, they, they do things so so interestingly, but it sounded like that they were... It's The way they phrased it, it sounded like they're trying to do something where you could use your 3DS as a controller or the Wii U. It sounds like they want to do that with the the uh, Switch as well. I even hmm. snapped. I'm so... I'm stuck on their branding. I was like, oh yeah, switch it up. Yeah, wasn't that a concept they had for the Wii U? Yeah, uh, like, so well, I think you could do it in Smash Brothers, right? Yeah, yeah, but it made the way this made it sound. Some of the phrasing made it sound like they want it to be so. Literally, if your friends have 3ds's, because I'm sure you guys have been to conventions and the hallways are just lined with people standing in lines playing 3ds's. So I think they want to make it where you could have a switch and just press like a configure button, and everybody there automatically can have controllers and join in. Yeah, that's and, cool. That's and it would idea. give the people that already own Sun and Moon on the 3DS that are upgrading to the Switch version, it would give them a chance to kind of trade their Pokemon over to the Switch version as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I just think about stuff like... Because I, the biggest gripe I have about the Switch overall is that I think the controllers are just astronomically too expensive. But I think it's smart marketing if they're really positioning the 3DS to also be controllers, because then Nintendo can market it as, well, you pay $80 for Joy-Cons or $120 for this 3DS that's also a controller that you play on the go. Yeah, that's kind of similar to how uh, with PlayStation and some games you can use the PS Vita as a second mm -hmm. controller for the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you liked it, give this video a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss out on future gaming news, theories, rumors, and discussions. Also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on how it could be improved. Your feedback is the most important part of bringing the quality of content on this channel to be the best that it can be. I would like to take this time to give a huge thank you to this month's Patreon supporters, Jonathan, The Itch Network, Magic Tech Review, John Frank, and Harris Priest. This video was made possible by supporters on Patreon. If you would also like to support this channel, head over to patreon.com slash gameoverjesse where you can support this channel as well. Rewards vary from having your topic featured on a future discussion, seeing videos early, joining as a guest on a video, shoutouts, and having a custom avatar similar to my own drawn of you to match any video game or anime art style that you would like. Mine is of myself as Link, but you could choose to have yours any way that you would like. Finally, I would like to thank my friends CSGuitar89 and Nomo Designs for providing the music and artwork for this video. Oh.